All right, guys, so we're back out here at Grand Cayman. It's beautiful weather temperature-wise. It's over 85 degrees right now, but it's blowing about 30 knots. It's actually 12-foot seas offshore. We're out here with Andrew of Why Not Charters. Lobster season's from December to March, correct? Yep. Okay, and what about conch and the limit on what we're catching? How does all that work out? All right, so conch season opens at the beginning of October all the way to the beginning of May. Um, we're allowed 10 per boat or 5 per person if you were just swimming offshore. So today we hopefully will look for around 10 kong. The high heads behind the boats normally will hold a few lobster. Okay. So we should be able to get a couple lobster in the high heads out here too. Very good. Alright man, cool. Well, let's do it. We'll get in the water and catch some. Sounds good. Alrighty. As soon as we jumped in the water, we saw conch everywhere. And then Louisa went down and she ended up coming up with two of them. With the conch being everywhere in the area, that's just a really good testament to the law enforcement in the area and the rules that they have set in place to protect these conch so that they're only open certain times a year. They have a certain amount that you're allowed to keep, which is very conservative, which is good. And that's what you want on a small island, and that's why there's a lot of conch around here. And then we move the boat a little bit more over another little patch reef. Right away, Louisa spotted a lobster that was kind of shoved up in there. And then Louisa took that snare and started kind of poking and prodding that lobster out into the open so that she could slip it over the back of its tail. And then I saw a lobster on a different head of coral and I went down to get it. That lobster was shoved way back in the hole, so I was trying to kind of tickle it out with that snare and that wasn't working, so I reached around the back with my bare hands. I grabbed the lobster and pulled him out, and luckily he didn't rip my hand up. I kind of grabbed him under his tail and just squeezed really hard so he couldn't go anywhere. After we had plenty of conch and lobster for us and the crew to eat for lunch, we went ahead and got back in the boat and started cleaning the conch. All right guys, so we caught a few lobsters. We also caught conch today with Andrew here, Why Not Charters. And uh, now we're back on the boat and he has the grill set up right here. We're cleaning the conch right now and we're gonna have some grilled lobster and conch. Delicious. Jacob was preparing the conch, so he was kind of getting it out of the shell. And then after he had got all the conch meat out of the shell, he started chopping up the onions and the peppers and the, the limes and the lemon and all the different things that we had that were going into that conch salad. I mean, I know you're not there to smell it with us, but just the smell of those fresh vegetables and the seasoning and the grill going and all that stuff. I mean, it was just making us so hungry while we were out there. And we had some of the best food we could ask for. I mean, conch and lobster is about as good as you can get anywhere in the world. It didn't take very long at all for the lobster to cook. And since we were sitting out there in the water on the boat, I mean, time passed so fast and it was already ready to come off the grill. That lobster was so good, man. It was just melding in my mouth and the conch salad was delicious. And after Louisa and I had a little bit, everybody else just dug in and, you know, the consensus was the same across the board. Everybody loved it. Just really, really good. And again, that stuff wasn't even caught less than 30 minutes before we were eating. Oh my God. Good on the grill, huh? Incredible. How about some black and trigger fish for dinner? Ah, oh, man. You can see these trigger fish. You can watch him just take, see, he's just trying to get down to the bottom. Short burst. And a lot of times you lose them if you don't have those sharp hooks, small sharp hooks. A lot of times they're just too barely in the lip of their mouth, that rubbery lip. Come on up here. Man, they pull hard. I love catching trigger fish. I love eating trigger fish.
right. Got you right there. Small hook, see, right in the lip. Look at that. I mean, barely hooked in the lip. And see his mouth? A big hook, you're gonna miss him. You can almost taste him, man. Nice trigger fish. Yeah. That's what we're after. That's the ticket right there. Trigger fish. What's for dinner? So it's a lot of fun catching trigger fish. We know it's gonna be great eating trigger fish, but a lot of people get intimidated when they try to clean a trigger fish. All right, so let's get started. So there's a lot of different ways you can clean a trigger fish, but the biggest thing is penetrating the skin right here. Some people like to take a serrated knife and just go right down the edge. There's a lot of wasted space, a lot of wasted weight on a trigger fish. This is really all the edible stuff here. The head takes up a whole lot of room. So you wanna make a cut like that on each side if you're gonna do it with a serrated knife. And then go down the edge of the skin. Just take your knife and run it just down the edge. I get to the other side and I poke it all the way through. Come over to the other side. And again, run it just down the edge. Because that skin will just dull out your knife. Now a lot of people like to go ahead and fillet it. Some people like to do this and skin the trigger fish. And you certainly don't waste any of the meat on that side. And I just take my knife and run along the, the uh, backbone there on each side. Spin around, do the same thing. Start from the back and then on a trigger fish there's like a little knuckle right here. So kinda gotta get over that knuckle. There's your fillet. You trim it out a little bit. Rib cage out of there. And then, the, and then I like to just take it and take my knife and run right down the middle of the spine. Take that middle piece right out. That's your trigger fish fillet right there. Now we've got our catch clean, it's time to get these trigger fish marinated. So I take some extra virgin olive oil, just line the bottom of a cooking dish here, just enough to cover it and get a nice layer there. And then you can use uh, two or three fresh garlic cloves and mince them up and mix this in. I found this paste works pretty good. Just take some of that garlic paste, put it in there about that much. Take a spoon and stir it around a little bit. Mix that in. It's time to pick out some dinner fillets. Boy, that one looks good right there. Let's lay that one right there. Man, that's a nice trigger fish. Cover that up with some olive oil. Cover that up, throw it in the fridge. Rotate it about every 30 minutes, leave it in there at least an hour, I would say. All right, so while our fillets are marinating in the refrigerator, let's get our spices set up, our blackened seasoning here. So start off, I've got uh, one and a half teaspoons of cayenne pepper. A little more paprika, you're gonna have one and a half tablespoons of the paprika. Three teaspoons of salt. Then you want one teaspoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of garlic powder, half a, tea, half a teaspoon of white pepper, half teaspoon of oregano, and a half a teaspoon of thyme. So what we want to do now is take it out of the marinade and what I do is just kind of lay it and blot it with a paper towel just to get the excess oil off. All right, so we've got our fish. They're, they're all blotted up, ready to go. I got a, a stick of butter that I'm gonna stick up, put on here and melt. We're gonna take our fish, dip it in the butter, put it on the plate, put our seasoning on it. And then the key to this is a super hot, super hot cast iron skillet, super hot. I'm gonna take the fillets and dip it in the butter. Get good and, good and buttery. Man, can't get enough butter, right? Now. 
Sprinkle on our seasoning. I like a lot. It's gonna cook it, it's gonna cook it fast. All right, once you get them in there, I'm gonna sprinkle the other side. And again, this isn't gonna take long. Doesn't take long, about a minute and a half on each side, if that. And, and that's, they don't call it blackened and redfish for nothing. The more seasoning you put on it, the more charred it becomes. Once you turn it, you tell when fish is done, I always just like to take a fork. And just when it parts with the fork, it's, it's time to eat. Okay, see how that starts to just flake in the fork? Blackened trigger fish bit of rice and asparagus. This is gonna be so good. Let's eat. So I was fortunate enough to be able to fish with Jeff, the president of Salt Life, and Louisa, and a few of the other team members while we were out here. We pull up to the first spot, and almost immediately, Jeff hooks into a snapper. That's dinner right there. Yellow tail. Pacific yellow tail. Woo wee! Alright, we have dinner. Got a Pacific yellow tail snapper. Fantastic. It's gonna be uh, great this evening on the grill. started putting around a little bit again, seeing if we could run into something else. And we ended up catching an African pompano, which was awesome because Jeff was wanting one for dinner and we got it. Woo! The shot! Aha! It's under the boat. All right, we just got a fish here in Costa Rica. Seems like a good one. You got dinner, girl. Oh my gosh, it's not a rooster fish. It's actually an African pompano. Can you grab him? Do you want to grab him? Here, Charlie. Right, I'll look. Here you go. Woohoo! Check it out. Little African pompano, guys. Pretty little guy. Oh, They're delicious to eat. Rooster fish, African pompano. We got everything here in Costa Rica. <laughs> and then after that African pompano, we ended up getting another one. Woo! It's gonna be a nice fish. What do you guys think it is? African pompano, rooster fish. Big cubera. It's an African pompano.
I'm Jeff Stillwell at Salt Life. I'm down here in Costa Rica at Crocodile Bay. We've had a fantastic day out on the water. Uh, caught some African pompano that we've already cleaned, and we also have a, a yellowtail snapper that we caught. We're about to clean that here. And Chef Enrique, Chef, Chef Enrique here at Crocodile Bay is gonna show me how they cook this fish, literally Costa Rica style. I, I do a lot of cooking myself, but I need to learn from this expert. So we're gonna learn how he does the fish, and we're gonna watch him prepare the snapper. Obviously, you know, when you rough clean the fish on, on a dock, you know, the chef gets, the first thing you see in the video is Chef Enrique literally cleaning up the fish to make it perfectly, the fillet's absolutely perfect to go on the grill. Then we season them with a little bit of salt and a little uh, saison complete, so it's kind of a complete seasoning. You don't need too much seasoning when you're using a very fresh piece of fish that was literally two hours ago was swimming in the ocean. After we did that, we threw those on a very hot grill, a big nice green egg under charcoal fire. And we pull those off and have a beautiful platter of fish that we're gonna be uh, enjoying here in just a few minutes. Yeah. 